Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Dorian, and you're listening to Highway to Scale. It's a podcast in which we explore the ins and outs of business success and where we cover topics like validating business ideas, exploring different management styles, building products, launching them on the market, raising capital, and scaling your business. Now, before we get to the main part, please consider subscribing and get in touch with me if you want to be a guest on the show. In today's episode, I'm joined by Massimiliano, who is the CEO of Contents. He is a serial entrepreneur with five successful exits. He is also the author of the bestseller called Successful Startups, and he's one of the few Italians who appeared on Forbes and on Fortune. In this podcast, Massimiliano will tell us about the mindset of following his own instincts, what are investors focused on when they're looking to invest in a new company, and what does it take to successfully build and sell multiple companies. So let's cut the intro and let's jump right into the episode to see what Massimiliano can teach us about building a business. Massimiliano. Thanks hey. for joining me on the Highway to Scale. Thank you very much indeed, Dorian. How are you today? Very well, very well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Excellent. So, before we jump into the, the main topics, could you tell me a little bit more about contents, about your company? How did you start? Uh, what are some of your current goals? Okay, great. Um, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm an excellent entrepreneur. I'm mm-hmm. 40 years old and uh, I've done this job for the last 20 years. Uh, I'm old. <laughs> I founded <laughs> the company that three years later would be my first exit during the university. Mm-hmm. I exited five times as founder and three times wow. as an investor. And uh, after my last exit, uh, I did five years of sabbatical and uh, mm-hmm. as an investor, uh, as, as an investor only. And I realized that I have, have much more fun being an entrepreneur. <laughs> much more than an investor. So in 2018, I launched content in my new venture. You know, we we are a deep tech company um, that is trying to innovate in a wonderful market that I love since I was a child, the marketing Mm -hmm. and communication industry. It's a rich industry for sure. But uh, how can I say? It's been been a standstill for too long. We are Mm -hmm. trying Mm -hmm. to renew it through AI. And we are learning more and more how to generate content automatically uh, without human, human intervention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so can you tell me what are some of the some of the biggest benefits of your platform as opposed to some of your competitors? Oh yeah. What, what makes our company unique is the way it's disrupting the world of information communication through AI. Mm-hmm. The, comp- the competition around is growing day by day. Uh, yeah, I'm proud yeah. to say that uh, we are a leader in this field and our technology is uh, well ahead of our competitor. Mm-hmm. Our mm-hmm. intuition is that this technology should be not prerogative of Accenture, Deloitte, McKinsey. Mm-hmm. These big consulting firms sell technology, which in part already exists, at a very high cost only to those who can afford it. We yeah, try yeah, to yeah. democratize it and make it available to everyone. So we have worked to lower the cost a lot and to make this technology available to everyone. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the big news on, on contents. And then, of course, the proprietary algorithm, which all allows all to go faster than others. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I, we, we aim to be global and, and uh, we, we already... Uh, we already have a presence in five important countries like Spain, Italy, France, UK, and now also the US. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are trying to offer several tools in only one platform for a more organized and harmonious vision. So can you tell me a little bit more about this this technology? Okay, I understand that it's proprietary and uh, there are some things that uh, you of course can't can't share but uh, what do you see as the biggest benefits of using AI in in software AI automation or robotics uh, are some of the most pressing issue on contemporary society the future scenarios of work for, for example will be strongly 
characterized by pressure of automation and it's no longer mm -hmm. possible to consider these issues as a matter of science fiction or robotics research labs. The central question, um, how can I say, that needs to be asked is in fact the role that will be reserved for the human in these areas and how to prevent that the innovation that our artificial intelligence incorporates will also overflow into the disruption of the contemporary of future social fabric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our goal will never imply in a replacing human work, but creating yes, yes. an ethics and support that can help creators, e-commerce owners, advertiser, advertisers to speed up tasks in a smarter way. Mm -hmm. That's why we are not scared, but excited about this technology growing every day. Because we have the right tools to understand it, exploit it, and then optimize our work through it. Mm -hmm. It happens that sometimes the journalists talk about us as those who are going to replace yeah. journalism. Yeah, But exactly. I would like to specify that this is not the case. Not at all. We want to free people from manual mm -hmm. work, from copy and pasting, from reshuffle news, because that's what the machine does. The machine will never do an interview like you now, and an investigation. The machine is mm -hmm. able to take content that already exists, redo it, write it better, and write it faster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But but people people are scared because no. <laughs> they they still don't understand AI uh, in the fullest. I mean, it's it's a fairly new technology, so it's it's kind of understandable. But uh, I I really like your mindset. You know, we are not here to replace you, we are here to speed up the work, yeah, make everything yes. more efficient. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me a bit more, how do you see the, the future of AI? How can I say, uh, it, it, it was just said that the, the AI will, will be central in our future. Mm -hmm. So understanding, understanding it, exploiting it, could be just hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we talk about you as a as a CEO of, of contents. Can you tell me what are you currently focused on the most? I do love a lot the operation, but I can't because I have no mm -hmm. time. And uh, you know, every day is important to wake up and decide to learn something new for me. Read, stay informed, be angry for culture and life. <laughs> and uh, only by working primarily on on our self growing and improving, we will always be 10 times better than our competitors. This that is, is my true. answer. That is true. And uh, speaking about contents, we know that that to get to the top, we must always aim high. And mm -hmm. uh, another peculiarity of our startup is being borderline. Uh, we okay. insert ourselves in a gray area and avoid that we saw an opportunity and we jump on it. We are, we are off... Uh, to a great start and uh, mm -hmm. we are to innovate the capacity of our idea. How would you how would you describe your management style when it comes to, you know, uh, building your team, building your business, building your company culture? Mm -hmm. Well, we are flexible, lean, and I, I, I like to say crazy pivotal. <laughs> mm -hmm. We were told that to remain the best, you must always try for excellence. Okay. A big mistake is to get attached to your idea and consequently mm -hmm. become re reluctant to make changes and improvements. Nothing could be more wrong. Yeah. You yeah. know, for me, as an entrepreneur, as an investor, the idea is nothing itself. Execution is everything. And I would like to say that Contents is an execution company. Can you, can you tell me ab about uh, some of those big changes that you made? Uh, during during your career, uh, for example, started uh, we started as a media company powered by by AI, and now mm -hmm. we are a deep tech SaaS company. We changed our skin during the the pandemic, and uh, was a success. That's great. That's great. So uh, I read one of your one of your interviews. Oh, wow, uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in, in in this one. You had a, a you had a great quote uh, that says uh, that you as a business owner are never satisfied, 
that you follow your instincts and that you've done some mad things. Can you, uh, can you explain that mindset a little bit? What are some of the, the positive sides of that? And uh, are there maybe some negative sides? Well, uh, um, first of all, every day we innovate. Mm -hmm. As a team, we consult, we study, we experiment with new goals. We decide what to do, how to grow, how to become the best version of us every fucking day. Mm -hmm. If you find mm -hmm. an idea, you can stop thinking about it. It's probably a good idea. And in contents, we will never stop thinking. Uh, I, I, I want to I wanna tell you a story. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was uh, 19, okay. um, as, as soon as I finished my, the university, uh, I had a plan that at uh, the time they told me, you are crazy guy, you are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I wanted to, to compete with the biggest telco in my native country. I'm from wow. Italy on okay. the intern business. And I was alone. I was 19 and alone. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, um, it was uh, 1999. And uh, well, in three years, I had 20 companies and 20 companies companies choose my startup rather than telecom in oh, wow. uh, 20, 20 uh, in uh, yes 20 in 2001, 2001. a big French group uh, bought me uh, bought me and was my first exit if mm -hmm. I, I hadn't that ambition that time to compete with the biggest telecom around i would surely not be here today and, yeah yeah uh, so ambition is the first trump card for me uh, the second is never being satisfied, and always wanting to improve, to innovate. As we as we talked about uh, in the beginning, you were you were an entrepreneur and you're also an investor. Uh, what made you What made you uh, you know go back to to entrepreneurship? I I, I just having more fun in being an entrepreneur. I I like to be in the office with my team. I like to be on the product. Uh, it's something completely different. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I prefer to be an entrepreneur than an investor because being in contra, actively making and creating is my passion uh, since I was born. And uh, I still think I have a knack for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, Basically it drives you every day, as you, yeah, as you yeah. said. You can, you can, through entrepreneurship, you can learn every day, as you as yeah. you said. That's that's one of the most important things. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I'm also an investor, so um, how, how can I, I how, how I choose uh, the startups where where I invest my money? Uh, first of all, I invest in people because mm -hmm. team for me is everything. Okay. Okay. Uh, what what are you looking for in a team uh, when it comes to when it comes to choosing a new company? Focus and passion. If uh, I, I don't believe in half, 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 half time founders, I don't believe in uh, people not having fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm, now that I'm older, I, I also believe in numbers. Before, not now, I believe in numbers. How much time do you? I know uh, you still invest in in investing. <laughs> uh, do not do you do it? Not, not, not much. much. Now, now I'm really focused on contents, and I also invested some some of my money, of course, on mm -hmm. contents. So not much. Now I have also two two children, so my okay. my my life is full of uh, little kids around and um, and contents. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, can you tell me what are maybe some uh, some other aspects when it, when it comes to investing? What uh, what else do you look for besides besides people and their their focus? I never invest in niche. I also I I always invest in big and rich industries. Mm -hmm, because the mm -hmm. big and rich industries are where you can bring innovation and when and in the in the is where you can disrupt mm -hmm. so uh what would what would be an example of a uh, big rich industry content marketing for example okay okay <laughs> content marketing is it's rich but is uh, hold so it's perfect for me basically uh, a lot of Traditional industries that yeah, are not they are not yet digitalized yeah. are pri prime, you know, real estate for for investing. Yeah, but we are also in the second or third generation of internet entrepreneurs, so it's time mm -hmm. now to also to innovate in the uh, first generation of digital business like content marketing. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I agree. It's a, it's a great opportunity now. Contents recently raised uh, <coughs> six six million dollars, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Uh, can you tell me more about that process? Uh, okay, we've, we've covered your side. What do you look for and uh, when you're investing in a new company? But uh, when you're looking for someone to invest in your company, uh, who are you looking for? What kind of uh, what kind of an investor? There is a lot of money around, a lot of money, even in Europe. When you're looking for an investor, don't just look for money, but uh, look for the right people. Mm-hmm. And... Mm-hmm. Um, that's what get us in this round and we are very happy to have found the perfect partners to accelerate our growth mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so people not money okay when you when you say accelerate growth uh what do you what do you exactly mean is it revenue of course we are not in california so revenue is important. <laughs> and uh, um, we, we aim to become a truly global company this is our growth Okay, so uh, you mentioned California. Can you tell me uh, a little bit more about your thoughts on uh, Europe startups versus U.S. startups? Well, um, now I'm I'm speaking with a lot of uh, venture capitalists from California, and mm-hmm. uh, I would like to say that it's, things are changing because uh, uh, now, uh, if, if ten, ten, ten years ago, uh, they used to invest only in California startups. Yeah, yeah. Now they are looking. All around the world. Who cares if you are in uh, Milano, if you are in uh, India, if you are in Croatia, but you must be truly global with truly mm-hmm. global customers with truly global mindset. Who cares where you are? It's not important, but you, you must be truly global. So now it's a great opportunity, not only for the entrepreneurs, but all, also for the venture capital firms in Europe. Yeah, because yeah. money is money everywhere. <laughs> true, true. We can see a lot of a lot of European companies are getting more and more investments. So it 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 really looks like the 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 entire focus has a little bit shifted, you know, from solely looking onto the the US startup scene and it's going back uh, yeah, back to the to the Europe. Can you tell me a little bit more about bootstrapping? What do you what do you think about bootstrapping as opposed to, you know, raising outside capital? Is it something that you'd try? Okay, I, I will start from a point and I will finish to a completely different point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, well, it, it, it's only fair that uh, each startup choose the best formula with respect to its own possibility and goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in the startup phase, railing solely on one's own strengths and the uh, startup's ability to, to generate income Uh, I mean, first one to be shrewd and ready to seize all the opportunity that arise along the way. Mm -hmm. The the decision to bootstrap with all the limitations that come with it, first and of course the scarcity of capital, Mm -hmm. force startuppers to transform this limitation into opportunities. Uh, The development of a client-centric philosophy the increase in the sense of responsibility and discipline of team, the development of all important problem solving, mm-hmm. decision making and creative thinking skills, and then, I mean, the ability to maintain the control of the company are the just some of the growth opportunity experienced in bootstrapping. The, yeah, my first yeah. startup was totally bootstrapped, but for sure now in 2021. If you need capital, uh, if you need capital if you want to mm. lead. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you need capital That's true. now. You can take the bootstrapping round, but you need to be aware your growth is going to be slow. Uh, when, you, when you take outside capital, you will be able to grow much faster, but you have that set of limitations that come with uh, raising, raising capital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would be, you know, let's say your top two, top three advice for uh, young startup owners. Okay, first of all, you you have not to be afraid to make mistakes. The best ideas are born out of failures. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
out of uh, the thousand times uh, you have tried to succeed and out the thousand and one times that you finally arrive the result you are for. So um, this remains the only springboard to reach and stri- strive for the best version of yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, what else? Of course, the study, interest and curiosity are the basis for success. Uh, as an, ter- an entrepreneur, because uh, only if you learn from from others, you you, you notice the mistakes and the grade in which to True. to yeah. fit. And uh, I I would like to to say also that I'm 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 a fan. I really love the copycat. And uh, <laughs> uh, three three of our, of my five exits was. Uh, copycat of a, a u.s company then i just copy in the europe <laughs> nice basically yeah basically you don't always need to be an innovator to achieve success that's you, that's an you, amazing you, you can copy and then innovate the copy <laughs> you don't need to innovate you know from the from the ground up <laughs> i i want to suggest to everyone to read the book of cleon still like an artist Austin okay cleon the name is still like an artist that you will find on Amazon, and uh, it's a great inspirational book. Still like an artist. Like an artist. Let me let me ask you just uh, just one more question. Uh, when it comes to to contents, uh, you've started a company a couple of years ago. What were some of the biggest challenges that you faced over those years, and can you tell me how did you solve them? Well, my biggest challenge uh, was and is attracting and retaining the best talents absolutely okay. is the is my biggest challenge as, as i told you before for me execution is everything so mm-hmm. having the best talents around is uh, is my priority and yeah. it's not easy it's not only a matter of money it's uh, yeah y- you know make ourselves known as an in- innovative company <laughs> that which, mm-hmm. which which we are actually it's it's another challenge and it's yeah. strongly related to attract uh, uh, talents yeah and, you need to yeah. you need to tell the story of your company yeah, because of course you understand so we also want to grow expand abroad even more and uh, uh, our attention not to be only international but global it's a strong mm-hmm. and exciting for me what are some of the some of the future plans for uh, contents Maybe what are some of the, your next steps? What can we expect from, from your company, uh, let's say, during this or the, or the next year? Well, there, there is a huge opportunity in the content creation industry. Uh, we want to become the booking dot, booking.com of the content industry. Okay, and, great. <laughs> uh, we, we, hope also, we hope to be a support more and more for the small and medium enterprises that rely on us. We hope to become more and more global we intend to never lose our innovation and our creativity because this is what makes us alive that's great that's great uh creativity and innovation with that aspect of stealing like an artist really sounds like a prime no no it's it's really really related (laughs) (laughs) you can take any angle that you want okay we can maybe do that copycat angle yeah. Start start our success. Okay, and, and we can uh, allot some of our time into direct innovation, something <laughs> that we'll do uh, from the from the ground up. <laughs> that's that's amazing, uh, Massimiliano. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. This was short and sweet, but uh, I think we got the gist of what makes you a successful entrepreneur and an investor. So thank I you. really want to thank you for for joining me and for sharing all of these insights. Thank you, Dorian. Thank you, everyone. And uh, as I always say to my team, keep pushing. And we are done. If you stuck with us until the end, here are a few key takeaways from this episode that I want you to remember. Number one, don't get attached to your idea to the point that it prevents you from making changes and improvements. Every idea can be upgraded. So think of it as a starting point that's made real through proper execution. Number two, allow yourself to embrace the mindset of never being fully satisfied. Uh, Constantly look for new ways to innovate and improve yourself, your company and your products. This will keep you ahead of the curve. And number three, 
there is a lot of money around. So when you're looking to raise capital, don't just look at the amount of money that someone is willing to invest into your company, but also look at the people. Get a partner who will help you accelerate your growth. Okay, now, before you sign off, don't forget to subscribe so you get notified when we publish new episodes. And leave us a review if you enjoyed this podcast and learned something new. It will be highly appreciated. Also, if you want to be a guest on the show, shoot me an email or hit me up on LinkedIn. My contact info is down in the description. And that's it. I'm Dorian. You've been listening to Highway to Scale. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.